and saw school benefit near San Francisco last weekend, along with Smashing Pumpkins, Marilyn Manson, and Alanis Morissette, then repairing to L.A. to shoot a video, which is where Chris Connolly caught up with them. Metallica's load sold 7 million copies worldwide. Its subsequent tour made some $34 million. So for Reload, it's no surprise that Metallica would go back to the same eclectified metal that was such a hit last time out. What's different this time? Well, on this video set, there's a lot of drug use. Fortunately, that drug is Dramamine, because right now the four members of the band are trapped inside that two-story spinning box. What it is, is that uh, we're sitting on this sled and the room is revolving around us and it gives the illusion that we're actually spinning like this, defying gravity. No one spewed yet, so we still have a couple hours to go. <laughs> so we'll, we'll see what happens. What happens on Reload? Band members say its 13 songs continue Metallica's foray into the leaner, more varied sonic attack that hasn't always met with unanimous approval. There's a little more opinionated responses on these last couple records, I think. It's not like, eh, it's okay. It's, I hate it or I love it, you know? Which is, is how I, I think it should kind of be. We're not meant to be background music, you know, while you're driving. There's plenty of people interviewing me saying, you know, well, you're not as angry as you used to be, blah, blah, blah. You know, what are you going to do now when you're, now that you're happy, you can't write lyrics. There's crap like that, you know. You know, there's still ugliness down under. Certainly all is not well in the world of the memory remains. A typically meaty Metallica track with guest vocals from the legendary Marianne Faithful and a Sunset Boulevardish lyric. <laughs> While their record company would have preferred a title without Reload's more of the same spirit, band members aren't shy about linking the two CDs together, since Reload's tracks were largely recorded at the same time Load's were. People ask me, you know, how does it tie? It is part two of Load. It's, it's nothing more, nothing less. It's not, it's not the scraps. It's not all the B material. It is the other 13 songs. Load was supposed to be a double album, and it still is. The two records just came out a year apart. <laughs> What we wanted to do is try to put out records more often and tour more scattered. And by breaking this into smaller bits, that becomes an option. The band has been trying to prime the pump for Reload's November release with a free concert. After attempts to stage it in Boston and Chicago fell through, Metallica issued an appeal to its fans to offer a suitable site via an 800 number and an email address. The results? 35,000 calls, 5,800 emails in four days. Not bad. Oh, yeah. This way we might get a record contract one day. I think there's a few people that want us to play in their town, you know. This is a lot of a lot of backyards waiting for us, I think. <laughs> I'll invite my friends over for barbecue. That same friendly feeling was much in evidence last weekend as Metallica played its first ever acoustic show in Mountain View, California at Neil Young's 11th annual benefit for the Bridge School, which Young's wife Peggy runs for severely handicapped children. Metallica, with Jerry Cantrell of Alice in Chains sitting in, covered Leonard Skinner's Tuesday's Gone. I wouldn't mind integrating some of that stuff into our show. Uh, you know, acoustic sets, they can become pretty boring, you know, and uh, Metallica need to get up and move around, you know. You can only sit on a stool for so long, you know. <laughs> Alanis Morissette was also there. That I really want with MTV News. This hour,